What's going on, Washington football team fans? It's your boy back with another video. Hey, you know, everybody's talking about the defensive line. Everybody around the world is, is, is recognizing now that our D-line is a force to be reckoned with. And it's been a long time in the making. This just sitting a D-line that was built overnight. And actually, collectively, as a whole defense, we've been playing good. But it starts at the line of scrimmage. And our D-line usually controls the line of scrimmage. So that's why they get all the pub. And besides having the young stud chase young, that doesn't help. But, I mean, this defense, like I said, it's been in the making for a while. It started five years ago. Scott McLuhan's last year as our personnel director, as our general manager. He selected, even though this guy isn't here this year, Matt Ioannidis, he selected Matt Ioannidis. I did, a vi I did a draft video a few years ago when I talked about that he was good. So, imagine if he was there right now. Then the next year, Scott leaves. Cal Allen, not Cal Allen, Cal Smith takes over. And his, and his first pick, draft pick was Jonathan Allen. Solid pick. A lot of people thought he had a little too much usage coming out of college that Nick Saban might have used him up. And he did get hurt earlier on. But one thing about this guy, this guy's a winner. You know what I'm saying? He he doesn't lose. He doesn't like to lose. I didn't say he doesn't lose. He doesn't like to lose. He gets injured. We couldn't stop the run. That's just the main thing they were talking about that offseason. Everybody was talking about how we couldn't stop the run. So even with Derwin James on the board, we selected Deron Payne out of Alabama. And everybody was like, oh, gosh, they're getting all these Alabama guys. That's when all that was going on. The plug the hole up. We got Allen and Payne together. And then we had, we had Allen, Payne, and Ioannidis, which was looking like a formidable a formidable D-line. Because you got to think, at that time, Alex was, this is before Alex's injury. We were looking pretty damn good. And then injuries hit us again. And then next thing you know, we're picking high again. We get two first-round picks. We pick Dwayne Haskin. Then we get Montez Sweat, a guy that I thought should have been drafted earlier in the first round. But for some reason, he slipped. He slipped in the draft. And we ended up with him. It took him a while to get his footing. But the last six games of the year, or six or seven, he had a sack every game. And I was like, oh, my goodness, if he builds on that, imagine what we'll get. But that year was crazy. We had Case Keenum. Jake Gruden was a lame duck coach. And Dwayne, they didn't give Dwayne a fair shake. So we're terrible again. Second worst team in the National Football League. And you know what Cal Smith does? He solidifies the D-line by drafting a freak of nature. And I think Montez Sweat's a freak of nature too. He's actually playing the best football out of all of the guys right now through the year. Not saying he's better than Chase or I'm not saying he's better than Payne. I'm not saying none of that. But I'm just saying as far as productivity, we've been getting the most out of Montez Sweat. So then we bring the freak of nature Chase Young in here this year. This is like the icing on the cake. The cake was made. We needed some frosting. You know what Kyle Smith did? He got the frosting. We didn't draft Tua. We didn't go Isaiah Simmons. We didn't get the old lineman that the Giants got. We didn't get Big Beckton. We got Chase Young, a pure monster. Motor is high. Reminds me of Julius Peppers. He reminds a lot of people of Julius Peppers, but he reminds me of Julius Peppers with a little bit more fire. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how people say something about like some people they when they compare LeBron to Mike or LeBron to Kobe and they say that Julius Peppers is more like LeBron but Chase Young is more like Kobe he has a killer instinct he doesn't stop I seen him giving Trent the business yesterday I mean even though Trent held his own but uh, dealing with Montez and, and Chase, man, that's going to be a tough task for years to come. They're so young. 
everybody's still in contract year. I mean, Matt Ioannidis is signed, I think, and and Jonathan Allen. Of course, we're gonna do a extension on him. We're gonna pick up that fourth year option. Montez, he's this is his second year. This is Chase's first year. This is Payne's third year. So this D line man is kind of like when the Cowboys put that O line together a few years ago. So we got to get something out of this O line. Out of this defensive line. And um it's crazy, man. That you, you could just see them. They're physical at the point of attack. I, I mean, real physical at the point. Of, I mean, I think sack should be should be more. But I think a lot of that, I mean, like I said, man, Chase gets double, triple. You have to keep an eye on him. And he frees a lot of things up like Montez, like Payne. This D-line gets their hands up. And like Jack Del Rio said earlier in the year, he had to get them from using old habits and play this way and trust the way that he's coaching. And now you can see the way he's coaching is panning off. It's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, look, I mean, just go across the board, man. Jonathan Allen, first round. Deron Payne, first round. Montez Sweat, first round. Chase Young, Mont- Ch- Chase Young, first rounder. I can't forget about Big Tim Settle. That's another guy in the rotation. And of course, the old veteran Ryan Kerrigan still here. So I mean, is is we're not we're a rough out, and I'm telling you. Seattle's going to have trouble with us next week. I'm not saying we're going to win the game because I don't know who's quarterbacking or not. But if it is Dwayne, just don't turn the ball over. Let this D loose. Let this D loose. And and But we've had our trouble in the past with scrambling quarterbacks. We have had our trouble in the past with scrambling quarterbacks, but we'll see. But this D line, man, is scary. They scare me. So I can imagine what they... I mean, you heard Ben Rosselberger. He asked Chase, like, why do they got you going back in coverage? And and the crazy thing about this whole situation, can you imagine if Matt Ioannidis was here with this D right here right now? What, he had like 11 sacks last year? I mean, he just gets that push up the middle. When he gets back, it's just going to get scarier and scarier and scarier and scarier and scarier so man look man we got something to be excited about i think we got the best d-line in football i could be biased but i don't care man i I just think this is the best d-line in football from top to bottom from dt's to dn's it's the best defensive line in football hell <laughs>